If you ever wondered what is it about Yves Saint Laurent, why is it all over the place, why does Lenny Kravitz now tell you to buy this, in my opinion, very well smelling scent, well, today we're going to talk a little bit about the brand's history, where it came from, and when it started, and while I'm doing this, I will blend in right here, I'll make a little bit of space, all the fragrances that I think were interesting with a little blurb. So get your coffee, sit back and relax, and let's get right into the video. In 1962, Yves Saint Laurent started his brand and began to make beautiful clothes for rich and famous, mostly women. But YSL didn't just want to dress women with clothes. In 1964, he worked with perfumer Jean Amic to make his first scent. And that scent was Y. Back then, it was a scent that showed how elegant and expressive his couture clothes were, and it was made for the beautiful women that he dressed. The green Schiefer juice came in a bottle that was to look like a woman's head and shoulders when it first sold. The letter Y was placed in a clever way to show the neckline of her dress. Now, after making a name for himself in the fashion world with his couture collections, Yves Saint Laurent felt the need to grow his empire so that more women could wear his clothes. YSL was always a fan and lover of women. He once said that women should be put on a pedestal with the world at their feet. He also worked hard for their social freedoms. Wifehood, motherhood and a career were entering a new era and women could have it all, including a wardrobe that was both practical and feminine, sexy and trendy and even had a touch of masculinity. That made him decide to make a ready-to-wear collection and he opened a boutique for these free-spirited independent women. Yves Saint Laurent kept coming up with new ideas in 1966, giving women the power and freedom to question traditional ways of dressing. He showed women how to wear heels with their pants, trench coats over their evening clothes and feminine clothes with a masculine twist. Also in 1966, Yves Saint Laurent released the tuxedo, which is a symbol of classic masculinity, but remade it for modern women. This daring look caused a lot of controversy at the time and women were even turned away from some of the world's best restaurants at the time because of it. For example, I heard of a case where a woman wearing a tuxedo was turned away from a New York restaurant. So she took off her pants and wore her jacket as a mini dress and was then allowed to eat in it. <laughs> How much times have changed, although we're still kind of the same in a different way. When Yves Saint Laurent released his first men's fragrance, Pour Homme, in 1971, he shocked the world again by posing naked himself for the photo. This was a stark representation of the values of his house, which were comfort, sophistication, modernity and audacity. In the same year, he opened his new boutique. He made a scent called Rive Gange for the women that would shop there. It was the first fragrance to come in a tin can. And as far as I know, it remains the, still the only one that was packaged in a tin can. But correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. At the time it came out, fragrances came in elegant bottles that were best kept at the dressing table at home. In 1977, YSL wanted to show off another side of femininity, sensuality and seduction, so his opium collection did just that. And women all over the world fell in love with it. This boldly named fragrance made by perfumers Jean Amique and Jean-Louis Suizac, sorry if I pronounced it wrong, is a rich mix of ombre, ambers and vanilla. The name caused a lot of controversy right away, as you can imagine, as a scandal and rumors spread, so did the demand, so you know how it is, there's no really bad publicity. The global press was criticizing YSL for trying to shock, but the scandal only made people want it more. Testers were stolen, posters were torn down, and stores sold out of stock in a matter of hours, on the day it came out. Even after many years, opium has never stopped changing and shocking people. This was especially true in 2000 when a naked Sophie Dahl was the face of the campaign, posing naked while high on opium. <laughs> the campaign only lasted five days because of so many people complaining about it. In 1983, YSL made a tribute to the city that had always loved and supported him and where his dreams had taken flight. And that city is Paris. 
experienced perfumer Sophia Groisman made a perfect floral scent for a woman in love in this magical city. When the 1990s started, however, there was a big change in society and culture. This was caused by the booming economy, which put money in the pockets of the people and made it a time to celebrate power. You know the saying, let's party like it's 1999, right? So to mark this exciting time, Yves Saint Laurent made Ivresse. It was originally called Champagne, but the name was changed after a lawsuit from the makers of the sparkling wine. It has bright top notes of peach and nectarine and the warm heart of oak moss and cinnamon. It smells like a party and a rush of power, so just right for the time. And in 1998, In Love Again, a fragrance that is a fruity floral masterpiece by perfumer Jean-Claude Elena, made women fall in love with YSL all over again. The top notes of blackcurrant and grapefruit are immediately enticing. And then the warm notes of blackberry and apple take over and the scent was a hit right away and YSL fans still have it in their perfume collection today. The Ombre collection was the start of a new era for YSL perfumes. It was a tribute to Saint Laurent's love for the East, which he got from his Algerian roots. Inspired by different rooms in the Middle Eastern palace, the collection has four masterful from Inspired by four different rooms in a Middle Eastern palace, the collection has four masterful perfumes. There were Supreme Bouquet with its enticing floral mix, Noble Leather with a mix of leather and spices, Majestic Rose with beautiful May Rose, and Spended Wood with its incense and oud notes. These were the new collectibles for perfume lovers and the way to enter a luxurious world of Saint Laurent's Orient. YSL to this day still has a reputation of being very creative both in perfumes and clothes. And to celebrate the brand's new rock chic style, YSL Beauty released Black Opium in September 2014. Black Opium has an overdose of a black coffee accord which wakes up the senses right away and it has a voluptuous white floral heart and a sweet vanilla base. In the next year, Black Opium won the prestigious UK Fragrance Foundation Award for Best New Woman's Fragrance. And since then, the fragrance has gained a lot of collectors who love the limited editions and new spins on the smoky scent. The very feminine Mon Parfum has also been added. It has been inspired by the city of lovers Paris all over again. It is a modern white chiffre with white notes and patchouli and musk. It was made by perfumer, I assume he is French, so I pronounce it French. Henri Fremont <laughs> and he said Mon Perfume urges you to seize the moment, transcend the present and get ready to fall head over heels in love. So YSL continues to both please and surprise people. Maybe the last word should go to the famous designer himself who was brave enough to pose naked for an ad for his own perfumes who was saying at the time since perfume is worn on the skin why hide the body. That being said Maybe he enjoyed it too, so who knows. What say you? Now I haven't really spoken about this bad boy because we all kind of know him already. But what do you say? What is your experience with YSL? Do you like what they're doing? Do you enjoy their fragrances? Do you hate them? Let me know in the comments below and I'll talk to you in the next one.